uh, Pastor Jacob uh, George from North Carolina. Uh, they are with us this today, this morning, and uh, uh, we call them actually Joy Chan and Valsamama. Uh, you know, uh, actually his family and uh, uh, and our family are so intimate friends because uh, we all are from uh, the same town, Nilambur. Uh, especially, I cannot forget his father and uh, his mother, uh, Pastor Vijay George. Uh, we call him as uh, uh, Sandra Pachan, uh, who has been the center minister of IPC uh, Nilambur Center for almost uh, uh, 50 or 60 uh, years or more than that. And uh, it was it was uh, during the time of uh, dear Pachan's ministry, uh, I accepted Jesus as my personal savior and then uh, Apachan gave me the, the water baptism, and in those days, I could experience the infilling of the uh, Holy Spirit. Amen. And again, uh, we are so glad to say that uh, uh, our wedding was solemnized by uh, dear Apachan in 1998. So I thank God for everything that God has given us and uh, uh, preparing the servants of God for every one of us. And, uh, uh, you know, nowadays, uh, both Apachan and Amachi. They have become so old and having many health issues and they are taking rest at home. Uh, I still remember my childhood and uh, which I spent with them uh, in those days. I mean, and uh, uh, also our dear uh, Walsam, I mean, uh, yeah, Walsan, Walsandi's uh, uh, brother, uh, Joy Papachan brother and uh, their family and their sister and their families, uh, uh, family members. They are the founding members of IPC uh, Vivek Nagar Church in Bangalore, uh, where we were ministering before we come to U.S. And I thank God for all the uh, all the memories and everything. I mean, by the uh, uh, at this time, uh, by the way, uh, at present, Pastor Jacob George and his family is settled in uh, uh, North Carolina and uh, doing the ministry in different places uh, in different capacities. I mean, and uh, it's a privilege to have the man of God with us to share the word of God. Let us sit in the presence of God with a prayerful attitude and let's all put our hands together and welcome Pastor Jacob George in our midst to share the word of God. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Can you all hear me well? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, sir. Okay. okay. Just a hand. Everybody you can hear? Yeah, yeah, sure. I just want to make sure that um, you, know, you can hear me. And my system is working properly. <clears throat> I thank and praise God for this wonderful opportunity to join with um, the eternal church of God in Sacramento, California. <clears throat> it's indeed um, my pleasure and my family's pleasure to join with uh, um, my dear um, Sam Kuti, Matthew and his family and the wonderful church in the city of Sacramento. <clears throat> so um, as Pastor Sankuri was mentioning, uh, we've been very close family friends and his father and myself. We've been engaged in uh, different type of ministries when I used to live in that part of uh, the country. <clears throat> And his father was just like an uh, elderly brother to me. And I still know that family dearly loves us. And um, we often talk and, um, and uh, it is a great pleasure to see that uh, his father has been very much fruitful in the ministry and uh, the expansion of the ministry in, uh, in, in the Northern part of Kerala state. <clears throat> And I know Pastor Sankuti, when uh, he was uh, uh, very um, young and uh, little, and uh, when he was in elementary school, even before that, I know him. Um, I thank God uh, uh, for him and his ministry and the way the Lord has led them so far. Um, it is all God's doing. God is great because um, God does not owe any debt to anyone because of what the Lord is enabling us to do in this earth. His father suffered a lot for the ministry. And now I can say that, um, that he is uh, reaping the benefit of being in the ministry. Praise the Lord. Not only here, his son in United States and he's uh, one of the sisters in Chattanooga. 
and the rest of the families um, in Kerala. And uh, one of his uh, uh, brother, he's a pastor of uh, one of the, uh, the um, pioneered a church and uh, his father basically pioneered a church. Uh, and then uh, his son, Binoy is the, uh, his name, the pastor's name is Binoy. He is the pastor of the church. And once again, I thank and praise God for this wonderful church. And uh, I um, never met anyone, but uh, we are all brothers and sisters in the name, uh, in the presence of God. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Because God has uh, um, made us his dear children. And uh, he gave us the opp opportunity to, to become one family, whether we are in different places, whether we have a uh, uh, we can claim so many um, uh, original originality or uh, you know um, uh, whatever it may be, but we are all belongs to one family. Praise the Lord! And I've been to Sacramento only one time. We used to live in the northern, um, say, the western part of United States. We were we've been in, uh, in the state of Oregon for almost uh, fifteen years. And then um, I was also working along with the ministry, but uh, I got uh, uh, relocated from um, Oregon to North Carolina. And that's the reason we've been here now. Uh, the Lord is so uh, good to us and uh, the Lord has taken care um, of each and every thing that uh, uh, we need in our life. And uh, there's no complaint because the Lord is good, so good to me. Praise the Lord. Um, uh, my wife, uh, Walsla, uh, is uh, sitting next to me and uh, she is being uh, very helpful and, uh, and, uh, and be a blessing uh, to what we are doing. And we have only one daughter and her name is Aksa and she is out for um, some of her uh, job related um, work. <clears throat> this morning, I thank God for the opportunity to share the word of God. And uh, many times when we, when you invite some um, ministers to preach or your own pastor um, uh, preaching, most of the time, many pastors will say that I'm going to read a very familiar passage. This morning, I was uh, attending another Zoom meeting um, and the, past, the, the guest pastor of that, um, the, uh, um, um, of that meeting said, I'm going to read a very familiar passage. So there are so many familiar passages that we can read, uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can select from uh, different parts of the Bible, even especially when you are talking about the, the book of Psalms, um, uh, many of the Psalms are very familiar. We've been um, by hearted and memorized many verses and many chapters in the Bible. Even uh, when we were, uh, our daughter was very young, uh, we forced her to memorize Psalm 119, and she did that uh, one time. I don't know whether she remember it now or not, but uh, we did that. So there are so many familiar passages in the Bible. Even uh, for our uh, uh, daily uh, family devotion time, you know, uh, if you are uh, short of time, uh, we try to find the shortest uh, Psalm and a familiar Psalm to read every uh, for every. Uh, family devotion time in the morning or in the evening. <clears throat> but today, I don't want to say that uh, the, the psalm that I, I'm going to, again, um, I'm going to, um, and to um, uh, bring uh, my message from one of these psalm. Um, but I don't want to say that this is a very familiar psalm because most of the time uh, we don't spend uh, uh, enough time to look this psalm or read this psalm. So, um, I got to uh, spend time in this particular psalm, and uh, when I was reading it, uh, I found so many um, insight from this wonderful psalm. So I just wanted to bring um, the thoughts and the message the Lord has put in my heart this morning. I pray that the Lord, uh, it may be a blessing to each and every one of you. Before I start the message, I just wanted everybody to close your eyes. Just um, pray that um, uh, the Lord may speak to each and every one of us. Praise God. Father God, we thank you and praise you for this wonderful morning that you have given us to gather together to worship in truth and in spirit. Mm -hmm. Lord God, I pray that you bless um, the, uh, the eternal church of God, church in Sacramento, and each and every family members. Um, I pray that you are a continual blessing mm -hmm. and, uh, upon each and every family 
and whatever uh, they need in their life. Lord God, I pray that you meet their needs according to the riches in glory. May the light be a shining light um, in the days to come in this land of United States. And so, Lord God, I'm praying for Pastor Sanguti and the Praisi and their daughter Aksa and uh, their families. I pray that you continue to bless them and use them uh, in the city of Sacramento so that they can bring so many unsaved to the kingdom of God. We love you, Lord, as we are going to look into your word. <clears throat> I pray that you uh, um, to speak to us this morning as we are sitting in the presence of God. In Jesus' most precious name, I pray. Amen. So I'm going to, uh, I'm requesting your attention to the book of uh, Psalm number 107, Psalm 100, 107. If we study the book, the uh, the book of Psalms, uh, we can see that uh, there are um, uh, the psalm has been divided into five different books, and uh, I'm not going into details right now. Uh, but the Psalm 107 is the first uh, psalm uh, of the last book five, book number five. The psalm, as I said, the the book uh, the psalm is divided into five, into five books, and the Psalm 107 is the first book of um, uh, um, uh, uh, first chapter uh, in, in book number five. So um, this psalm has a special place in my heart since this psalm remind uh, my Christian experience. When you read this psalm, as I said, now many of you uh, never had read this psalm, but if you, as we, after uh, we finish um, um, uh, spending time on this psalm, um, I believe that you are going to uh, read this psalm again and again, and it's going to be blessing. And it's, you, you, at the end of this sermon, sometimes you may be saying that uh, um, uh, this is uh, my experience. Uh, the, the exactly whatever is showing in this chapter is my experience. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, um, uh, and also I can say that uh, uh, this is a psalm of desperation. This is a psalm of thanksgiving uh, from the people who has experienced that desperation in their life. And uh, we, all, uh, uh, we all know that uh, for the last uh, uh, more than one year, um, uh, the entire world is suffering um, due to the COVID-19. And uh, um, uh, many people, um, those who never expected passed away from this earth by, with the effect of COVID, and uh, many people are still um, um, in the hospital and many people are, um, are going through a difficult time. But uh, during this time, this Psalm may be a very much helpful and the strength for each and every one of us. So let us look, um, a look into this Psalm. So since uh, we are um, uh, doing um, uh, Zoom, um, uh, in the Zoom platform, um, I know we cannot, I, I don't want to ask anybody to read because it's going to be a disturbance. So please listen carefully as I'm going to read uh, the, 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 the verses. So I don't have a title for this Sam, but if I give a title, if I wanted to give a title, the title of the Sam is, is verse number one. Uh, the second and the third part of verse number one. The, the Psalm start with, oh, give thanks, oh, give thanks and to the Lord. So the title can be, For God is good, for his mercy endures forward. Praise the Lord. When we are going through this tough, tough time, every children of God can say that, uh, For God is good, his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord. This morning, how many of you can say that, uh, Lord is very good to me during this whole one year of COVID effect in this earth. Hallelujah. But the Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever. Verse number two, it says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. This morning, I can say that we are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Because we have a redeemer, Jesus lives in heaven, praise the Lord. Job, uh, um, the great um, man of God, faith, uh, man of faith, uh, said that my redeemer lives, praise the Lord. Can we say that my Redeemer lives, our Redeemer lives, my family Redeemer lives, praise the Lord. Our Redeemer lives, praise because he has redeemed us from the wretched, uh, sinful life, hallelujah. As we are singing this song this morning, uh, it's uh, uh, the Hindi song uh, is um, uh, really, um, I, I bless that, um, I, I've been blessed with that song, praise the Lord, hallelujah. 
I used to live in Delhi almost 10, 15 years. Um, and I, I, yeah, I was very fluent in Hindi, but for the last uh, 30 years, um, um, you know, I didn't have any touch, but uh, this morning, uh, when uh, dear um, uh, um, brothers and uh, sister, when you sang this Hindi song, I started um, um, uh, recollecting what I learned those times. There was a Hindi song. Uh, those days uh, we used to sing in our church. Tere lagu se, um, um, uh, tere lagu se mere uh, dole tu prabhu. Tere lagu se uh, mere dole tu prabhu. Lord, you cleanse me hallelujah, from all my sins. Hallelujah. The Lord has cleansed us from all our sins. That is the reason we can say that uh, the Lord is good. He is my redeemer. Praise the Lord. So um, the verse number two says, let the redeemed of the Lord say what? Say what? The Lord is good for his mercy and days forever. Praise the Lord. So even though we are not gathering in one single place, so when I'm uh, asking a response, you can sit in your bedroom, in your uh, living room or family room, and wherever you are listening from um, this morning, you can um, join with me saying that the Lord is good for his mercy and days forever. Praise the Lord. And uh, then um, I am going to verse number three. And uh, uh, verse number three says, and gathered them out of the lands from the east, from the west, from the north, and from the south. So the Psalm is, we don't know who wrote this Psalm. Psalm 103, if you look, go back and look into Psalm 103, you will say that it, that is a Psalm of David. Then after none of the Psalm has a heading, and who is the um, uh, the uh, who uh, uh, who is the author of these psalms? But who were, um, wrote this psalm? Maybe David. But he said, uh, "We've been delivered from all corners of life. No, not only from north, uh, um, south, or east or west. When you look into the history of Israel, and we can see that they've been delivered from all corners of the world. Praise the Lord." So um, uh, um, they've been redeemed from south, the, the, uh, the southern country of Israel is uh, Egypt. So when they look back to their life, they can see that they've been delivered from south, that is the country of Egypt. Then they've been uh, delivered from north, uh, the north, uh, the northern part is the Syria or Assyria. Those are the countries in the northern part of uh, Israel. So when you uh, read the history of Israel, we can see that the Lord been delivered them from Syrians, hallelujah. Then uh, uh, the Lord been delivered them, redeemed them from East, uh, East uh, the, uh, uh, the, the Eastern country of um, Israel is Babylon. So the Israelis been delivered from, um, uh, uh, from Babylon in captivity after 70 years living in that part of uh, the world. And then uh, the another um, uh, direction is uh, redeemed from west, and the western part of Israel is this the the the, the place of Philistia. Philistines live in the western part. So we we know that uh, the uh, Israel been um, uh, tortured and uh, attacked multiple 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 times from the Philistines. So when Israel look into their life. They can say that the Lord has redeemed them from east. The Lord has delivered them, um, um, uh, delivered, uh, redeemed them from uh, uh, west. The Lord has um, uh, redeemed them from south. The Lord has been redeemed from Hallelujah East, all corners of life. This morning, when you are listening to me, can you say that the Lord has been so good to me and He delivered from, uh, me from all corners of life? Hallelujah. I could have been one among the Assyrians. I could have been one among the Babylonians. I could have been one among the Philistines. I could have been one among the Egyptians. But the Lord has delivered me out of all. Hallelujah. And He gave me the peace, the salvation, the joy of salvation in my life. We can thank God for what He has done in our life. So now I am going to um, um, to to um, uh, my the main part of um, my message. So I'm going to bring uh, four different pictures or um, or illustrations that is given in this particular psalm. There are four pictures or illustrations of God's redemptions and the deliverance, and when you as we are going through these four uh, illustrations and the directions, we can see that each picture 
has a problem. Number one, a problem. Four, four pictures I'm going to talk about. Every picture has four things written in, the, um, in, that, in that section. Number one, there's a problem. When they have a problem, then it follows by a prayer. A problem, a prayer. That's number two. When there is a prayer being offered, then there's a provision. So there's a problem, there is a prayer, there's a provision. And the number four, after the provision is being offered, and then there's a praise. Praise and worship, praise. So there's a problem, there's a prayer, there's a provision, and there's a praise. So we are going to look into them. The first one, the first pictures is from verse number four to nine. Verse number four to nine is the first picture. So this passage from verse four to nine, talking about a traveler in distress being guided to a city. A traveler in distress guided to a city. So God's redemption is like a lost traveler or lost caravan being guided and led to a safe city. Praise the Lord. Let's look into what the Bible talking about this traveler. This is a traveler. He is traveling into a direction. He has a destination that he wanted to reach. But for somehow, whether unfortunately, I don't know, for mistake, I don't know. But he been ended up into a wilderness. You know that a wilderness, lifelike, that if there is all by yourself in a wilderness, in the middle of a wilderness, can you find your destination? When you look, lift your eyes and look into all surrounding places, you will see everywhere looks same. All what you can do is do uh, see is the blue sky and the sand in the wilderness. That is the only things you can see. Verse number four, they wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. So they were wandering in the wilderness, unable to find a way. Just imagine if you are in that situation in a wilderness, so leading a solitary life, and there was no one to give you any direction, what will you do? Will you give up and think that, oh, let me die here? Or what will you do? This man who lost his way, he may be in a caravan. Caravan is a vehicle that goes through the wilderness. He lost the direction to go to his destination. At that time, what he will do, he has so many pains and problems, and he is facing life-threatening issues in his life. Verse number four says, hungry and thirsty, and their soul fainted, in them. That is the problem. Verse number four and five is the problem for the traveler, the distressed traveler. He didn't have any place to go. He couldn't find a way. He didn't have anything to eat. He, are, he don't have a job. During this COVID-19, many people, if you look around, we can see that they lost their job. Many companies doors been shut down. It is very hard for the people to pay their rent or mortgage. It is very hard for the people to meet their daily needs. There is no way they can meet their needs. I hope all of you migrated from India. We have a way to find 
something or other. But still there are people, those who suffered a lot due to this pandemic COVID. But at that time, when the problem comes to your life, what will you do? When the problem comes, the second thing is, there's a prayer. This man, he loved God and he may be a child of God. That is the reason he was able to cry. Verse number six is the prayer. The problem comes, then a prayer being offered. Verse number six says, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them out of the distress. The first part of verse six is the prayer. They cried unto the Lord. They cried unto the Lord. This morning, are you in a position to cry when you are facing a life-threatening situation? Where you, will you be able to offer a prayer when you are facing a life-threatening situation? Israel cried in Egypt. Israel cried when Assyrians came against them. Israel cried when they were in Babylonian captivity. Israel cried when Philistines came against them. They started shed the tears in the presence of God. Let me ask you honestly this morning, how long it been that you cried to the Lord? Maybe when you look into your own life, you may be thinking that I don't lack anything. I am satisfied. I have everything. But that doesn't make you crying, that, that, that doesn't, um, I didn't stop you crying in the presence of God. This morning, I am urging all the dear brothers and sisters and family, you start crying in the presence of God, shed tears in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Then when you pray, cry, that is the second thing. The third thing you can see, the second part of verse 6 and verse 7. That part is a provision. Whenever we pray in the presence of God, God has a provision for us. Praise the Lord. He is your provider. He is the Jehovah Jireh for you. How many of you believe that he is the Jehovah Jireh? Hallelujah. You are living in Sacramento, praise the Lord. But let me tell you, each and every day, each and every day, Jehovah Jireh is in your life. That is the reason you look into your life and you can say that I don't like anything. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want praise the Lord because he is the provider. Lord will provide, praise the Lord. Deliverance and redemption from distress. Wandering traveler, lost caravan. There is a deliverance and redemption even when they don't see any way, praise the Lord. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Praise the Lord. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. When you look into your life, you may be troubled. You don't know what is the next. But God is going to make a way for you. Praise the Lord. God cannot sit quietly when one of his child cried for help. If you start crying, when you face the problem, God is there to provide, bring blessing into your life. When this Assyrian, Assyrian's army came against Israel, God sent one of his angels, praise the Lord. When King Hezekiah started crying in the presence of God, God cannot sit quietly in his throne, hallelujah. When he looked around, he saw that the innumerable 
angels were sitting in his, near his throne. He didn't bother to call the archangel Michael. He's the strongest and the captain and the chief of the angel. But he did, God did not bother Michael at this time. He just called one of the angel and said, hey, you come over. And my people are suffering in Israel. The Assyrians start killing them, fighting against them. God said, you go and you take care of them, praise the Lord. That one small angels came down and they killed that day, that night, 185,000 people, praise the Lord. This morning, let me assure you from Psalm number 91, verse 11. It says, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God has charged an angel for you this morning. Praise the Lord. A child, a, an angel has been charged for you. Brother, an angel has been charged for you to take care of you. Sister, an angel has been charged for you to take care of you when you are going through problems when you cried out to the Lord. And then we see that God not only deliver us from distress and in verse number seven says, and he led them forth by the right way. So God showing them the right way, praise the Lord. Right way is the straight way to the city of habitation. Let me say that again, if you didn't catch it. Right way is the straight way to the city of habitation, praise the Lord. What is the city of habitation? Apostle Paul in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 10 says, a city which has foundations. It is not a city which doesn't have foundation. God has prepared for us a city of habitation which has foundation. Not only which this has foundation, but the builder, and the maker is God Almighty himself, praise the Lord, hallelujah. He is prepared a city of habitation. And then the last part in that section number one is praising. When they see the deliverance and the, the answer of their prayer, they were not thinking about sitting quietly. Verse number eight, if you have your Bible open to Psalm number one, uh, 107. You can read it there. Oh, that men would praise the Lord. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. This morning, can you sit where you are? Oh, men would praise the Lord. Children would praise the Lord. Sisters would praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is what God is you expect him from you and me today, this morning. We need to praise God in each and every situation. And also, verse number nine says, and, the, and he satisfies the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Praise the Lord. We read in Psalm number 34, 10, saying that the young lion do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good things. Praise the Lord. God satisfieth us every day. Praise the Lord. So a lost traveler who is in the wilderness being guided to a city, that is point number one. The second one from verse number 10 to 16. Verse number 10 to 16. This section is talking about God's redemption is like a captive prisoners in a dungeon <coughs> waiting execution. He's waiting execution, captive prisoner, praise the Lord. Cap, when you're talking about the captive prisoner, most of them are there military prisoners captured within the country due to some abnormal, illegal things that they might have done or captured from the uh, from, from 
uh, um, opposing countries. Whatever the situation may be, a captive prisoner. When you look, talking about a prisoner, the difference between a military prisoner and a, and a, a regular prisoner. Regular prisoner, even in the jail, Tihar jail in Delhi, there are so many prisoners there. They have great influence from the political party, politicians. They have big, big money. They influence the authority and they get free as much as they can within the, within the jail. They get the best food. They get the best uh, bed to sleep. They get the best room to sleep. But when you talk about a captive prisoner, he don't have that. He's in a dungeon-like place. There is no light. There is darkness. There is no enough food. They are hungry and thirsty. That is what this passage is talking about. Verse number 10. Such as sit in darkness and in shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron. You can just read this and give an interpretation by yourself. That is a captive prisoner. There is no way this captive prisoner can be escaped. And not only that, he is going to be executed within the next few days. He cannot see light. He was, he'd been told that he's going to be executed one of these days. Every, he, he don't know whether it's a morning or night. All 24 hours look like a dark in his life. Whenever some of the jailers come and knock the door, he may be thinking that he's been called for the execution. That is what he was expecting, praise the Lord. There's no one to help. No way that he can get any help. This morning, you may be thinking that I am not that kind of person. I'm not a prisoner. I am free indeed. We sung a song that I am free indeed. That is true. We are free in Christ Jesus. We are free in Christ Jesus. But when you are in a dungeon type of life, even many Christians are going through dungeon type of life. Praise the Lord. Going through suffering, beating, threatening, killing, execution. This may be some of the things that we face in our Christian life. It may come in different ways. Now, all around the world, the COVID-19 is being affected. It is a threatening. We don't know when somebody is being positive, they are going to be Live long. We don't know. They are looking for a death. Execution. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you. COVID-19 from China. Ebola coming from Africa with a different form. Verse number 12 here says, Therefore he brought down their heart with the labor. And they fell down and there was no one to help. There is no one he is there to help. Praise the Lord. We may, the whole world has been very happy with the Pfizer vaccine. But let me tell you, Pfizer vaccine is not the remedy, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Johnson and Johnson vaccine is not the remedy. Tomorrow, there may be something new may come. That is not the remedy. But the remedy, the only remedy from this situation is the word of God, praise the Lord. If you believe in this word of God, if you trust this word, and if you believe that this word of God can bring redemption and deliverance, that is for you this morning, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sometimes sometime you may be hit at the bottom of the barrel. 
there is nothing else remaining in the barrel at that time god will show you way he is going to bring something new in your life praise the lord hallelujah so when they were facing this problem and then the next verse verse number 13 says when they when this person was been i have been going to execution the captive prisoner he verse number 12 concluded with saying that there was no one to help at that time he had a place to go then they cried unto the lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distress praise the lord cried that is the prayer a child of god never stop pray, praying praise the lord even though you don't know how to preach even though you don't know how to go for evangelism but one thing you must know that is praying praise the lord hallelujah never cease in prayer praise the lord if you start praying for the nation for the country that you are living in or your nation back in india or whatever your origin may be if you are praying for your community there is a god in heaven who is able to hear our prayers praise the lord verse number 14 says that he brought them out of the darkness praise the lord a person is been going to execution living in darkness but when they cried the captive prisoner is been brought out of darkness into light praise the lord hallelujah that is the provision verse number 14 a captive prisoner is been freed his chains are broken the darkness turned into life he didn't have anything to eat hunger and thirsty was he but now he has plenty of food prison life now it is a free life praise the lord hallelujah in 2000 let me tell you something about my personal life 2018 and 19 was a drought in our life i was working and all of a sudden the organization the firm that i was working they declared they said that they are going to shut down the door because the company was going loss so they cut short the salary no bonus no incentive no raise there's no money to come to meet the needs praise alone i lost a job in 2019 january we didn't have any job for the next one year i hit the bottom of the barrel i tried to loan money from all kind of banks that i could get money to meet the different needs into at the end of 2019 or the early part of 2020 i wrote all my debts in a paper and then i wrote lord who is going to pay this debt you may be one of one among like that praise the lord the lord has blessed me in february 24th a job i love my job now because we decided to pay off all our debts even before 2020 end i can gladly say that lord has provided plenty to our family we been able to pay off every debt that we had the lord has used that to help so many people it is all because of him praise the lord there's nothing impossible for our god hallelujah now 
we can see a praise in verse number 15. I'm not going to spend time there because I just wanted to finish the next two more pictures from this part. Praise the Lord. So first of all, we can see that a lost caravan, a lost traveler, he will led to a city of habitation. Number two, the picture number two, a captive prisoner is being freed, never expected in his life that he's going to be free. He's been expected, yeah, he's been freed. And now he is filled with the joy and the happiness, praise the Lord. The third picture that I want to talk is from verse number 17 to 22. I wish I would read every verses to encourage you, but you can read it by yourself, even now or later. Now you just listen, you can read it later. The third picture that we can see in this part is God's redemption is like a sick person. Let me say that again. God's redemption is like a sick, ill person with no appetite on the brink of death. A man who is very sick, maybe due to a cancer, maybe a heart patient, maybe COVID, maybe Ebola, whatever the situation, maybe he is sick. There's no more medicine that can help. The other day, one of my uncle living um, in Cochin, and his daughter sent a message saying that Papa is very sick. He cannot eat or drink anymore. They started giving IV and they said, there's no help. The medicine, there is no more medicine to apply into his body. Praise the Lord. There is a limitation for medication. There is a limitation for vaccine when you are facing a life-threatening sickness, praise the Lord. God's redemption is like a sick person with no appetite. He cannot eat anything. He cannot drink anything, the sick person on the brink of death, facing death, facing death, facing death, praise the Lord. But he is receiving and recovering full health, praise the Lord. That is what this passage is talking about. Verse number 17. I'm going to paraphrase this verse from the Message Bible. You know, we have so many translations. The Message Bible, that says, in verse 17 says, listen very carefully. Some of you were sick, let me say it again, some of you were sick because you have lived a bad life. You have lived a bad life. That is the problem. America is planning to remove the word sin from the legal system. Let them remove it but they cannot remove that word from this word of God, praise the Lord. This is the eternal word of God. Sin is sin, praise the Lord. Maybe because of the transgression and the sin, people are suffering, praise the Lord. Now, when you are sick, only place that you can go is the presence of God. If you look into the life of Israelites in Egypt, we can see that God is visiting the nation, uh, 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 visiting the people. And God sent 10 plagues in the land of Egypt. But we see that the 10 plagues was not enough 
for the for Egyptians or Pharaoh to free God people. Even after they said he, they can go, but still they followed all the way up to the brink of um, uh, uh, River Nile. We know exactly what happened. God is the God of deliverance. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There is an imminent sickness, cotton sick, without any moment of time. Praise the Lord. When you are sick in that time, what will you do? A prayer, verse number 19, a prayer. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. They cried unto the Lord in their sickness. And then the provision comes when they pray. Every section, every illustration, every picture, we can see that when the problem comes, a prayer is essential. When they cried, they prayed. Then there is a provision comes in the second part of verse 19. He saved them out of their distress. They saved. How did he save them? Look into verse 20. Verse 20 says, God sent his word and healed them. Praise the Lord. This morning, you may be going through some sickness. Some of your family members, even in India or somewhere, going through some sickness and there is no medicine helpful to bring them out of their sickness. But if you pray this morning, God, send a word. You send a word and heal them. We know the, um, uh, uh, the, um, um, the discussion between Jesus and the centurion. Centurion came to Jesus for the healing of his servant. I'm, joining, I'm, I'm not going to spend time there. The verse number, um, I, um, um, this is in um, Matthew chapter 8, chapter 8, verse 8. This is what the centurion, uh, when he got the, um, uh, the, uh, the uh, intercourse with, uh, um, uh, with uh, Jesus, he said, Um, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. This morning, I'm in North Carolina, you are in Sacramento, but if there is a word that, that can travel swifter, faster than anything. Can you pray this morning, Lord? I need that word. My family member need that word. Hallelujah. My sick person in the family need that way. You send that word. If you read in the uh, about the, the, the compound the name of God associated with the Yahweh, I already mentioned Jehovah Jireh. Here you can see another compound name of, of God. Jehovah Rapha. God is my healer. Can you say this morning, he is your healer, praise the Lord. In 1981, I was in the sick bed at the Saptarjan Hospital in Delhi. And the doctor said, I am not going to leave anymore. They gave me just six hours to leave. They called my brother Lou and said, you can send a message to all the family members that he is going to leave only for six hours. That was in the month of August, uh, 1981, August 15. That night, a servant of God came to the hospital, not looking for me. Some of his church member was in the hospital. He just happened to saw me lying in the bed, waiting for death. He came and, and prayed for me that night. At one o'clock at night, I remember people telling I was unconscious. He prayed. As soon as he prayed, I opened my eyes. Praise the Lord. My conscience came back. 
There is nothing impossible for my God. Stopping your healing this morning. He is the Jehovah Rapha for you this morning. Praise the Lord. If you trust in God, hallelujah. He is able to deliver you from all your sickness. Praise the Lord. Let me move forward as my time is almost going to finish. Then after they receive the healing, then they start praising God. When God gave them the provision, they start praising God. That is in verse number um, at, um, 21 and 22. And I just wanted to conclude the last part of, the, of this, my subject. So God has been delivered, run, red, uh, redeemed, the lost traveler, the lost caravan. The Lord has redeemed the captive prisoner. The Lord has redeemed the sick person. Now the last part, God's redemption, like a doomed sailor being rescued from life-threatening storm. Verse number 22, 23 to 20, um, 32. God's redemption is like, is like a doomed, unfortunate, ill-fated, inescapable sailor. He's been in the sea for some good purpose. Probably, I think when I read this, this boat, the ship that he is traveling, maybe a merchant navy ship, or he may be in a fishing boat going into the deep of the sea, not the anywhere close to the shore, far away from the, from the shore, deep into the sea. When it, the ship or the boat came all the way to the middle of the sea that where nobody can even see where that ship is. Life-threatening storms. I'm not making it up. This is from the scripture. Verse number 23 says, They that go down to the sea in ships, that do business in great waters, merchant navy or fishermen, that see the work of the Lord and his one days in the deep. They have seen God's miracle in the deep many times. But look at what they are going through now. Everybody look into verse number 25. When they were in that particular part of the ocean, God commandeth and riseth a stormy wind against them. Hallelujah. And which lifteth up the waves thereof. We never seen the depth of the sea, the faraway place of the sea. When the winds comes, the waves took the ship all the way to heaven. This ship is been led by a captain. But in the following verse, in next verse saying that um, uh, they reel to and fro, the captain to reel to and fro and they stagger like a drunken man and art at their wit sense. This is just like a person who lost his mind, this captain. He couldn't even control because the ship is going all the way to the top. And immediately within a second, it is coming down to the deep. It started going up and coming down multiple times. There is no way that this ship can be saved at this point. Maybe you may be facing some life-threatening waves and winds in your Christian life. You may be just like a roller coaster. If you've been into the Disney world or Disneyland, you've been going through so many roller coasters with your children. Sometimes when you are in the roller coaster, you may lose your mind. You will just close your eyes. You don't want to see the, 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 um, uh, the earth below your feet, praise the Lord. Because it is going too fast. 
it is going uh, heavily taking a riot, uh, taking a right place alone. That is the same situation is heavier than that is what happening here. There's no way that, that they can find any help. Then verse number 28, the prayer. Then they cried unto the Lord in trouble. And uh, he, and when they cried, the provision is been bring forth, brought forth to them. He bringeth them out of their distress. He maketh the storm calm. Praise the Lord. When Jesus was in the ship, when the storms and waves started striking against the boat, which the disciples and himself was traveling, Jesus said, be calm. This morning, when the winds of you come into your life, when the waves started threatening you, there is a God living in your, in your life that he is going to calm, that he is going to calm the wind and calm the wave. That is the God we are serving. Then this passage ends with a praise that we can see there. I'm not going to spend time because my time is almost up. I want everybody close your eyes this morning. Everyone, close your no one looking around. From where you are sitting this morning. As I said in the beginning, this was my experience. That is the reason I love this Psalm 107. I was just like a lost traveler, lost caravan. I didn't know where to go. I don't know. I didn't know how to find a destination. I was wandering. Praise God. Hallelujah. I cried. I was just like a captive prisoner. I was just like a captive prisoner waiting for death. There's no way I could find a way to come out of the dungeon, the dark place, the prison life. Then I was a person, a sick person. I thought I was going to die in 1981. Praise the Lord. Also, in my Christian life, I've been through so many ups and downs. I've been just like in a roller coaster, in a boat where is deep in the sea, which is facing wind and waves and storm. That was my experience. I don't know about you, brother. I don't know about you, sister. Family, I don't know anything about you. But let me tell you, maybe this is one of your experience. When you are facing problem in your life, don't quit praying. Cease not in prayer. Don't quit in prayer. Prayer bringeth provision, praise the Lord. Prayer bringeth provision. When you receive the provision, the blessing, the deliverance, the redemption, then you don't sit quietly. You can praise and worship. I don't have time to explain. Go into that part. You can read it from this psalm. This morning, I'm going to pray for you. You can sit in the place where you are sitting, and you take your right hand and keep it in your chest. Lift your left hand. Just pray with me. Just pray with me. I'm going to pray that you can repeat after me or, or you can pray yourself. 
Father in heaven. I've been through very difficult situation in my life. I've been through, I've been like a lost traveler. Didn't know where to go. I was just like a captive prisoner. I was just like a sick person. No medicine could help. I was just like a person who is facing life-threatening storms and waves. But I thank you for your redemption. You are almighty. You are omnipotent. You are almighty. Thank you for your deliverance in my life. Help me to look into every situation that I'm facing in my life. Lord God, help me to continue praying every moment of my life so that I can see the blessed hand of the Lord in my life. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I thank the church and Pastor Sanguti for giving me this time to share from God's word. May God bless you all. Thank you.